All right, guys, we're back. Uh, Scott Rayburn in the booth with me. Uh, hey. Roland Garcia against Jaybird. Um, it's a race. It's a race to seven here. Uh, it's a race to seven, guys. So just ignore this uh, where it says race to nine for right now until we can uh, correct it. Yeah, we'll get that changed here momentarily. But just remember, race to seven. One loss side action. So the uh, winner of this match goes on to play BJ Usry for the title. That's right. No, he's a shooter. He likes to go. Yeah, that one, he didn't seem to put his hole into that. You know, he's kind of a, that was like a half-hearted attempt there. Yeah. He, I don't think he really knew what was going on. Maybe he was playing the full-on safety and he just really overhit it. Mm -hmm. You know, he was trying to get behind the 5-6 the down there. Yeah, race to 7. Well, can we change the uh, camera perspective here? Yeah, maybe. There we go. So, this is uh, this is difficult. Is he looking to draw and use the six to hold up? And oh, he banked it. He went for it. Oh, as the nine doesn't come back out, he's pretty good. Yeah. I can't tell here live. I think the nine's got him though. Yeah, the nine has him. I, I just looked down the the line of the shot. He's definitely uh, going to jump the, jump at this ball. Yeah, he just went and grabbed his junkie. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I don't know if this is going to afford him any position if he makes this, unless he can sneak out from the rail a little bit, but. Okay, what's going to happen here? Okay, Garcia is at the table with a pretty good rack now, if he can get this. You know, I think the three ball is going to park right on that nine, and then he'll be out with the cue ball towards the center of the table. That'll give him an angle to play the three and go in between the four, eight. Oh, no. That got away, but you know it might be fine. Yeah, he might have he might have lined this combo up kind of okay here. I think he has to cut across the previous him. combo. He needed to hit it at the square. Yeah. That way the three would have parked. Yeah. Then he could have spun the three with English and gone and picked the eight off. But lucky for him. Yeah. So far, both players have been a little wide open. But uh, right. I like the aggressive play from Bird going ahead and banking at that ball. Right. But I do know that these pockets are playing a little tighter than maybe some of the other tables have. Oh, trouble. So this here, does he just go ahead and just try to park behind the eight here? Well, that's Can hard. Because if you look at your tangent line mm -hmm. g g to the left, and when it plays the hit on the three, it's going to go square into the eight. Mm -hmm. What he would have to do would be just barely cut the three ball to his right, like hit, hit like 98% of the ball. Mm -hmm. Let the cue ball float forward and have a little left spin on it, like that. that. See that? Yeah. Now there's the freeze. There you go. Great shot. Great shot. If he had simply played that stun tangent line, he would right. have gone into the eight and hit the eight All right. on the and, side. And even if he, if, even if he just stops there and doesn't get behind the eight, it doesn't no good because the three's out, out where he could uh, leave a shot. Yeah, so but yeah. he could hit it. Yeah. You know. So, uh, guys, uh, that's just a little bit of uh, uh, great commentary there, right there from uh, Scott. You know, a lot of knowledge there on on how to hit that shot. You know. It's like a let-up stroke, you know. Yeah. Calvin, you you play the ball not quite like a pure stop shot because it would then go square into the eight, mm -hmm. but you let up on it just a hair, and the weight of the ball floats forward a little bit. Right. But that subtle spin there, mm -hmm. that little float, catches that spin and spins in. Because if you don't get behind the eight, it's no good. Yeah, I was going to try to mess this a little bit and spin down there. Oh no, he went zigzag. Okay. I I wonder what you know. You don't always have to jack up with that shot then if you're going to go zigzag. But um, I thought he was going to try to mass a. He must have been caught too much by the eight. Yeah. So. Center table shot. And okay. Now we can talk about you know <laughs> how my grass is growing in my my yard now mm -hmm. because these ought to be. Pretty much routine. I mean. One thing to look at here, you know, there's a particular angle that you want to attain here. Right. Um, sometimes, you know, people get the forward two rail angle where they go forward two rails and mm -hmm. they scratch down. A lot of amateurs do that. Right. He may play this one rail. You know, he went two, but he hit it with a little bit of a hook stroke. Right. See how that ball? And you notice how it's into the meat of that rail, exactly. nowhere near the corner pocket. Exactly. Some guys purely spin that ball and then they run straight towards the corner pocket. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of intricate stuff that's happening here. I mean, it's not just it's not just hey, let me hit it right there. You know, there's a lot of things that you're doing with your stroke and the weight of the ball, like uh, Scott's saying here. You know, those are uh, things that you're 
you know, if you're not if you're not already doing it, you've got to learn how to do that to be able to get the cue ball to take that line, because without it, I mean, uh, you're definitely not you're definitely not going to hook the ball the way he just did. Yeah, and you can manipulate angles and uh, tangent lines and all that sort right. of thing. You, well, not tangent line, but you can manipulate angles with the stroke and the pace that you strike a ball. Right. Okay. Well, we've seen B.J. Esri with good control on his cue ball. Uh, Garcia's cue ball tended to get away from him a little bit last mm -hmm. match, but let's see if he's reeled that in. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, look at that park. That's good. Now, he may not make one, but if he keeps breaking and parking the cue ball, hitting it with control, mm -hmm. it's good on yeah. you know, his favor. Now, I don't know if anybody else is paying attention here, but it looks like he he's mimicking what BJ was doing with his break by going over to that side. Yeah. Because you know? BJ, every time he's played on this table, he's broke from that same exact spot. Oh, yeah, you can see the BJ mark there. Yeah. <laughs> it's his autograph that, on the yeah, table there. That burn mark <laughs> that you're seeing right in between the 4 and the 10, that's BJ. <laughs> that's how back in the day, you know, road players would come through and they could they would know if I had been playing any pool. Yeah. They'd come to the pool room and look on the tables. They would look for that little squiggle mm -hmm. uh, that I okay. Now I thought that's what he would do. No, this is an ideal line to get on the left side of the three. You play this ball with about a. Imagine your cue ball is square and you roll this ball and hit that top left square corner and you get that result right there. And uh, I guess the w in the pool world we would call that uh, 10:30. Yeah. <laughs> Between 10 and 11. Yeah, if you're looking at it like it's clock. Like it's a clock. and uh, Yeah, this is tough. You know, he got straight in. Both balls appear to be frozen or near frozen. Mm -hmm. So he may have to cinch this ball and just lay up there. And unless he can... Oh, that's... That's the danger there. You yeah. Know. That's why maybe... You know, he thought he could get to that rail and get closer right. to his work. But he hit it so squarely mm -hmm. that uh, he didn't cheat it into the rail any. Yeah. And I know, I know that a lot of, like... Uh, these top flight guys don't like cinching these balls, you know. But man, if if that's if that's the the situation that you, you know you're, you're faced with, you just got to kind of. I like moving both balls here. Yeah, moving the ten ball. Like yeah, go ahead and hit it just above center. Right, you yeah. nudge the ten away this way a little bit towards the head string. Make the he might draw it out of there. Yeah, he did. Oh. But you could play the billiard and go to the same area, and right. it's it's a simple shot, and it just doesn't. It gives your eight more options. Right the side if you had to do that but you know it really shouldn't be any issue yeah. now he just kind of scratched looked yeah, away and scratched he's his head he's still, like, not, he's like still not fully settled in yet like uh it's not really happening the way that he's planning it you know so well i don't know why he did that why he scratched his head because he was fine there yeah I mean, he probably just figured maybe i needed to go another inch it's, just, uh, it's just that full perfectionist in there you know <laughs> things not happening exactly how they uh, envision them to you notice his sense of urgency here, Calvin? Yeah, I think he feels definitely. like he, he, you know, he's going around the table at a much quicker pace. He's feeling like I really dogged it off there and I'm sick about it in my last match mm -hmm. with EJ. I want to make sure I come back and win this match and right. get to redeem myself in the finals. Right, most definitely. You know, he knows, well, he feels like he's the best player. And mm -hmm. according to the Fargo rate stuff and people's yeah. judgment, you know, he's around an 800. Right. And uh, so that would probably put him as the, you know, saying he's the best player here. But uh, even Efren doesn't have 800, or uh, no one else does. So right. He thinks that he's the best player, and he really wants to win this match and get back and prove it. Mm. Um, I have noticed on occasion that uh, you know he appears to sometimes rush a judgment versus some of these top elite professional yeah, players really around the world. Settle in. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I feel like that shot that he that he overran on that five Look ball. Look at the cue ball. Yeah. And yeah, so he definitely learned something from that last match about the break here. <laughs> uh, tight window here, but he's good as far as getting on the two, but that doesn't give him any hope for the three. Um, he, now, no. my question is, is the three a dead billiard off the four in the side? <laughs> okay, he's looking at that. I'm also wondering, that 8-10 that gap is tight. I'm wondering if he plays over towards the nine here, mm -hmm. just short of the nine. Now, do you think he wants to be in a position where he's cutting the, the two ball to the right so he can go into those balls a little bit? Ideally, yes. But um, he's got to get perfect through here, and that's all right. Look at this, and he's done it. He's done it. Yeah. Yeah, and there it is. Now there's the breakout shot. See, that's a tight window to fall in. Yeah. That is exact cue ball control. And right. some of that has to do with thickness of hit on the object ball. You cut mm -hmm. it a millimeter more or a millimeter less, and it makes all the difference. No, that secondary no, that bump. Was, that helped. was a good bump there. 
That four bumping the three yeah. into position, otherwise he had no good shot. Yeah. You know, you have to look at an out sometimes. Like, it's just a puzzle that needs solving. That's right. You know, and there's usually one key shot. And I think that shot where he drew back between the 8-10 and fell perfect with mm -hmm. his speed, that was the key shot. Yeah. And, and I think that's going to do a lot for his confidence here. Not that he's not confident, but, you know. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, I don't. The, the six must play in the side. All right. Because judging by the way that he shot that ball, or else he would hit it. A little wider. Mm, now he's looking. I think he's looking to see where he's sending the eight at the ten here after he cuts his ball on the side, because he kind of lined up and kind of pointed his stick at the eight. So, so I guess he's not floating his ball. He's hitting it. Yeah. Okay. See the the eight. Now that could have hit the seven full and been bad. Yeah. There's an enforced error that didn't really materialize. Right. Okay. When he shot this ball down the left rail and floated down past the side, he barely got past the point, mm -hmm. and he got a bad angle on his next shot in the side, right. and it caused him to put that ball in play. Right. Had he shot the ball a to a wider part of his pocket down here at the bottom left corner mm -hmm. with a little high ball force, he would have hit before the side pocket because of the shock of the angle, the stun, right. and then his cue ball would have floated down here toward, it's going you towards the head string. Yes, for that next ball in the top right corner. Yeah, for the six in the corner. So that was a little bit of a mistake. That's a mistake that didn't quite materialize. Right, and, you know. see, and see, having Scott do the commentary here, you know, those are the little things that, you know, if you're just watching the match by yourself and there's no there's no commentary or anything, like, or even somebody that's commenting, com doing the commentary that doesn't know, you know, they would miss something like that. But, you know, good call there, Scott. Uh, definitely learning a lot by doing this commentary today. Well, I think I am too. I mean, it's three to nothing, Garcia. I'm, what I'm learning is that I need to control my cue ball if I keep playing a lot of pool. Um, <laughs> Got to hit this ball squarely, and I think he picked that up from BJ, just like you said. Right. He's done well last couple of breaks. So that one, it kind of cut it a little. Yeah, it kind of mishit the one there, I think. But it wasn't terrible because he went into the left side rail, right. which is great. Had he gone into the right side rail, you know, that's where you have problems. When you break from the left side over here and you get around the front of the one ball and your cue ball jumps off and then hooks in the right side pocket, that's because you didn't hit that head ball squarely. You hit it too far around to the right. You gotta hit it either dead square or a shade left of square. This is a feather thin hit. If he hits it too hard, he's going to cut the tin into the right side rail. So this is a paper thin. I had one of these playing BJ that would have put me up three or four games, like like seven to two or seven to three. Right. Yeah. And I, I went on that. to, but I overran the shot, and it was more near the spot area. It was a simple, simple play, and I overran the shot, and uh, it may very well may have cost me a match. Yeah, he tried to. Well, I mean, I, don't, I understand his frustration. That shot, you have to give every shot its due respect. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a case where he didn't. And I think he is a very talented player that still seems to sort of swing it a little bit, sort of goes after it without right. really getting down and getting robotic. Right. right. Now, earlier you asked me how old uh, you think he is. Uh, I found out that he's 42. Really? Yeah. Well, see, then that doesn't hold true, what I said about, well, maybe it's just a little inexperience. Right. So he can't be inexperienced at the age of 42. Maybe it's just inexperienced with tournament play. Maybe he's not a tournament play. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, it just seems like it was a little rushed to judgment. I mean, or I maybe he's just always fly by the seat of his pants kind of guy. <laughs> you know, maybe that's the way he plays. Yeah. yeah. Earl does it. You know. Yeah. Now this nine ball is now. He do you think he plays the six off the nine just to kind of develop it? I don't think it? that he will because the nine ball it's easy enough to attain shape on the yeah. nine and get right based on how the eight sits. Okay, so he can get even if it, this cue ball were where the seven is, he can play the nine easily. Right. Yeah, and you know he's overrun it. I'm really surprised. Jaybird is not himself right now. He's dicing at this. Yeah. Just and, and look. 
that's how easy it is to get out of line in the least. You know, you just get the slightest bit out of line. And he should have been on the board with this game. And, yeah. and then now there's a real chance it could be 4-0. And again, you know, what looked like a relatively, you know, routine out, you know, turns into something that isn't, you know. And that's why I keep saying, you know, just giving these guys outs all the time, you know. I mean, they're human. <laughs> In the end, I fully expect we'll see Jay Bird bank the bank save at ball, the side yeah. and play three rails around the table for position on mm. the nine. Above the nine? Yeah, he'll get on the high side of the, I mean, on that end of the table on the nine. Yeah. Now, with your with your cue ball being close to the rail here and uh, shooting that bank like you were talking about, now, can you hit it flat and do that, or do you have to apply a little bit of spin to do this? You know, if you hit it hard, you probably couldn't hit it flat, but I would hit it. Uh, the bank just plays a little more natural. I don't like the safety, but he, he hit it doggone good. My goodness, what a shot. Look at that. Uh, Look at that. Now, Jaybird is a uh, primarily a one-pocket specialist, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, he's a little of both. He's, he's like me. He's, right. you know, grew up on the bar table, mm -hmm. very strong bar table player. Okay. Just that power pool where you dominate the bar table and, right. you know. Um, and then one pocket too, but uh, well, turns out that was a great play by by Jay Bird. Yeah. I might have at the table. I may have gone down with the shot he shot too, but uh, man, I, I would have. It would have been real close to 50-50 if I banked at that eight or went for that safety, and he made a fool out of me because that, that was a great shot. Right. Okay, drive your ball high, touch a left, go all the way around. Nice. Ooh. Oh, did he hit the point of the side pocket, or I not? I or think he maybe he just shot I it wide. I think he just shot it wide with a okay. little bit of like stun run through there. You know. Remember just how Jay uh, was breaking the balls earlier, but let's see what happens. Well, I should remember because no. he broke the balls an awful lot when I played him. Jason's a guy that, um, yeah, you know, you ask about his one pocket acumen. Let me tell you, he can play the game. He knows the game. And um, he's a guy that goes to a lot of these big events and and knocks off the Chohans and Alex Pagelon. You know, beats some of those guys occasionally in a right. tournament, you know, or really scares them for sure. Oh, yeah. Let's see his cue ball, see how well he controls this. Okay, that's yeah, great. That's great. It's great. Uh, nothing turned nothing over. Down. Now this gives Garcia the opportunity to move this seven, uh, play the one, go into the seven. Now, got to be careful how you move the seven because if you draw your ball and come across the face of the seven, yeah. you could travel onto the. Now, do you think he court. goes into the seven and then into the two and pushes the two towards the pocket that he's shooting at right now? I think so, but I think in the end he'll have a lot of right spin on this and mm -hmm. roll it. Watch the rolling ball split them sort of. I got okay. the two kisses. That was the other thing. There's several things that can happen there. You really have to judge how you, how thickly you catch that one to determine whether you go into the seventh full, right. thin on the left side or right. thinner on the right side. Right. So. Oof. Now some people would have said play that ball and go up and down the table, all the way down to the right of the ten and then back towards where it is now, but he managed to kill that that uh, speed that would have been built up in the mm -hmm. cue ball simply by spinning it with inside English and mm -hmm. going two rails. So he didn't put that eight and ten in that corner pocket up there in play. Now, look at what he did. Okay, he worked. that worked out. Yeah, it works out, but... But I mean look, if that six, seven, six nine gets off angle funny, mm -hmm. now it stops his run potentially. Exactly. He was really trying to move that six to make the out easier, and he did, but in a lucky way. Yeah. He didn't know they were going to yeah. get dead wired he straight didn't account for. He didn't account for it uh, lining up the way he did. And playing great players, that could have been okay, an unforced cost, error. Yeah. But it yeah. worked out that time. Now it seems like it seems like they're both playing just a little bit looser and relaxed here because they're trying to, you know, <laughs> they trying to get sure it are. going, you know. 
Yeah, they for sure are. I mean, I think they both are know the note. They both know that they're in some pretty good money now. This is kind of a tricky spot, right? Yeah, because he can't get deep enough. See, he just pointed just past the side there. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a steep cut on the seven. The other option is to go ahead and no. Why? 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 Now he might come out great, but why? Oh my goodness! Are so you kidding the, me? Because that's the only way to get through the field Are you goal. kidding <laughs> me? He split the ten eight. Uh, get out of here! You gotta be kidding me! Yeah. What a great shot! But still, still unnecessary. Why? Unnecessary why? to be there, but you know, yeah. I think he could have played that ball and gone high out of the first two corners and hit, even if he overstroked it and hit just uh, past the side pocket and then right. back across to the other side of this ball down here, right. or accept a tougher cut. But uh, that was really, really. I mean, I, I think the reason why he shot it that way was because I feel like if, I think he thought that if he was gonna go forward, that he was gonna clip the ten. Really? Yeah, because well, I mean, even if you overcut the ball here, then yeah, you miss it. But I, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like, because you know, he was so close to the rail too. Yeah. You know? And again, we're in the booth. We can't see the exactly exact what it looked like there. Yeah. But I give, I commend him. That was an incredible play. Um, but how many guys can just do that with that accuracy, yeah. split the wicket like he did, and yeah. get down here? Yeah. But, but yeah. It's definitely exciting to watch, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just that like just Filipino like flair right there. Yeah. Good control. He hey got uh, he got ushered in. He got herded into the side pocket, but he did have good control on that. The cue ball right. parked and hesitated, right. and two or three balls teamed up on it mm -hmm. and forced it into the side. Right. Now, is the seven ball? You're wondering if he's got ball in hand for a play the two ten, play no, the two off the no, seven. No, the two off the seven. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm throwing out. It. These are options, right? right? I'm just throwing out options. You play the two ten, you play the two off the seven to open up the six, but the six isn't necessarily that much tied up. Okay. Because see, the six can be cut from center table. The seven hanging in the side. Okay. So I don't think he needs to play it off the seven, and by okay. playing it off the seven, he could tie the seven up with something, and it worked out fine there. Right. So he's good. So, yeah, that's a good call. He opened up his trouble there, and now it should be easy. But look at what he's done in doing that. Right. And I'm looking at his face. He's got a little smirk on his face because he fell too straight in on this four. And now he's still having to force position a little bit. You see? Mm -hmm. If he was going to do what he did, if he had drawn his cue ball back, he wouldn't have to be cutting this five across the green of the table. Right. Okay, now he's back. Great mm -hmm. shot. He's back in line. Oh, he didn't want to be dead straight. Yeah, he kind of hopped up, but he's okay. Smooth it on back out. Just past the side pocket. Have a little down table angle on this seven. I, he's really looking at this shot like carefully because I think he's got, when he draws this ball back, it's going like close Towards to the, the rail. rail. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Just smooth it back. Yeah. So you have one rail angle back up the center of the table. Right. I think that's why you know you ha <laughs> see him take just a, a, a touch longer on that shot to yeah. to get down. You know. Too. Yeah, these diamond bar tables, you know, I don't even, it's really not even a bar table because the slate goes deeper. Mm -hmm. The pockets are cut more like regular table pockets instead of bar table pockets. Mm -hmm. So really it's just a seven foot pool table. Yeah. But, uh, but it's not like playing like Jay Bird and I came up playing on bar tables like Bowen right. and Diamond. I mean, that's what was big here in South Carolina. It's right. a bar table capital of the country. You know, in the Midwest, they play a lot of bar table. Mm -hmm. And in Denver, they were playing a lot. But now it's turned the past 20 years. A lot of the country is turning bar table because of league play, because the size of rooms, pool rooms are going under at a record rate. Um, and but it kind of uh, helps. I, I feel like it kind of helps, like, the amateur player that's competing in a game like this feel like they have somewhat of a chance, you know, to, yeah. to have a, you know, good showing. Okay. Now, this shot is, is tricky, but um, if you're in tune on a valley bar table, I'm saying he's there most of the time. But you cut this one in with a rolling ball with a uh, about a – what is this, uh, 9 to 10 o'clock left? Mm -hmm. It comes right back to where it is now mm -hmm. and bounces between the 9 and the 10 to the right side of the 2. Okay. Now he's jacking up. Is he banking this? No. Okay, he shot that shot. He just he got into it. He got a roll. Yeah. But he got into it more than he dug it a little bit, if yeah. you know what I mean, lower yeah. left. But he could. I think he could have gotten that similar 
play with a little, just a good bit of side spin. Right. But now he's uh, in good shape. I don't know. He could have gone a little farther here. Now, see, if he shoots in the side, his cue ball has to travel a little too much. It might get in the space where the four is. Right. And so do you now think he shoots the ball in the corner yeah. and just goes to, goes to the rail and just bumps off the rail so yes, he can shoot the four? Yes, I do. But the thing is, you know, that's he had to do that because he didn't get just right yeah. last time. But that's okay. I mean, he's he's the one here playing to go to the finals of this tournament, and we're not. So yeah. <laughs> that's okay. We all, you know, have to continually adjust our plan because it never, you never go, you know, 100% to plan. No, you see, uh, I think a lot, I think a lot of people will shoot that shot and try to draw their all their uh, key ball back just a little bit to get that shape on the side, yeah. and uh, Jaybird just letting it go forward like that. Uh, is that just preference, or is, or do you feel like that's a better way to shoot the shot? Uh, it's, I like it because it gets a little more distance for you to get on the right angle. There you go. But, um, yeah, okay, things are tightening up here. Yeah. And, you know, they both had, they've both had good roles in this uh, match so far. You know, um, uh, Roland, Roland developing that, uh, that, that one shot where the other ball comes back and knocks the four out in the open right. where you can shoot it in the side. And, uh, and then you see Jaybird right there, you know, he shoot the shot that you called, but he runs into the 10 and pushes it out and gets a good shot. So, uh... Yeah, he just simply played that ball with too much dig in the cue yeah. ball. He didn't need to go quite so low, just right. relied more on the side spin. Right. But you know, that makes a shot a little harder. I've gotten used to shooting the ball with nothing but center right, center left, mm -hmm. and some people don't do that as much because they, they feel they get more deflection. Yeah. Which comes in more on the nine-footer than it would here. Right. But, uh... Okay. Okay, so where's the three? Okay, the three's right there. Let's see. Okay. Uh, so I believe this is the three ball right, right here. Right by, by the, the side, side pocket. Okay, let's call a crazy shot here. Crazy shot that he's not going to do, but I'll just call. Three five combination, cue ball, billiards, the ten in the side. <laughs> okay, okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's look at it realistically. He could lag the three forward and float up on the back of the five. Okay. Um, he could shoot the three if he feels that he could get a good square hit on this four, three, four, seven. But then again, I mean, you're cutting the ball across the grain of the table. In the back of your mind is a side pocket you're right beside. And if you hit the four left or right of square, you miss the seven entirely. So, yeah, maybe not on that. But, you know, a bar you table know, player I wants to shoot. I know that the shot that you were saying a minute ago sounds crazy, but I think he's looking at that shot. Well, you can bet he's aware that it's there. Yeah. But uh, it's a possibility. But here's the thing when you start gauging your shots. Yeah, it's a possibility, but what are the real percentage chances right. of that working out? Right. So what's that's why your great players tone it down a little bit. Yeah, Easy there, big fella. <laughs> you know what, man? I really think he's going to shoot your shot here. Is he looking at the combo right yeah. now? Okay. Yeah. He's sneaking up on it. I see him getting that look in his eyes. Look, he's looking across the, the three ball to see where he's going with the cue ball. Yeah, I, he's a junior shot, man. Okay, so he gives himself two chances to, he shot it. Oh, and he oh, combo shot. banked it. Yeah. But he's in trouble again. So what now? Do you go after the 10 again? <laughs> <laughs> or do you try to find his safety? Uh. So, you know, your first instinct is... Uh, is pretty much like his first instinct, or what he's gonna do there. That's pretty. That's pretty spot on there. Some of this aggressive play, it's from playing bar tables with a accommodating pocket, like a Valley or Dynamo. Right. Like these pockets, you can hang balls on the Valley or Dynamo. Yeah. You, you hit, hit inside the point. Sometimes it's going in for the most part. Sometimes on a Valley and a Dynamo, occasion. ball, uh, on a Dynamo sometimes in a Valley. You know, hitting that long rail. I mean. Y it's probably the better way to shoot the ball sometimes if you can hit it at the right speed, you know, if the shot affords it. Well, he's done well here because he got him with the 10 and the 9. Yeah. It's a good play. See, I mean, he, he can tone it down when he needs to. Yeah. So he's got the touch. Nice play. Uh, but that go-go, you know, mentality, it's, mm -hmm. it's the bar table player in him. You right. know, like, and by bar table, I mean like Valley Dynamo type bar tables where the pockets are cut to play larger, right. where they're cut to accept balls, mm -hmm. not reject balls yeah. like these make them do. Yeah. Um, you know, and on that type of Valley bar table, you can go for a lot of billiards, caroms, uh, combinations, mm -hmm. and off angle shots, you know, and, and get away with that. Look at the seven. Oh, and he makes the seven. 
He puts his hand up. I mean, take it. <laughs> <laughs> right, Scott? I hey, think I've converted you to my way of thinking on right. apologizing for locking the ball in. Yeah. Hey. Okay, he'd like to be center table where he is or just to the left of that. Mm. Okay, yeah, just to the left. That ball up. Yeah, that gives him the angle on the six to the right. Even though he still fell a hair straight, mm -hmm. he'll get down here for the eight. He just he just tucked it. And then now he'll, what do you play this with lower left and go three? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, and maybe come clipping at the ten. Look right out. <laughs> yeah, but the shot I was talking about where he goes up, Stays a little left of center. He mm -hmm. could have punched that ball in the top right corner and go into the side rail and back yeah. out, which is what he played for. But he's so smooth and so adept at I can just accommodate the shot by doing whatever I want to do. If mm -hmm. I don't get just right, that's okay. I know a shot right. for that. I can smooth my ball back. Just tuck draw it. You All know. Right. Five three going to seven. It's late night here in Aiken. It's uh, ooh, it's coming up on midnight. <laughs> Okay. Yep. So uh, something I just thought about when you were talking about valleys and dynamos and uh, diamond tables, and you were saying how this, the diamond has a thicker slate than the. Well, the, the slate. I mean, in the pocket, it goes. The well, slate goes deeper. Right, but is the slate on? Is oh, the it's slate thick, thicker too. It's yeah. thicker. So yeah. what I was going to ask you was, uh, some. I think Jim mentioned it to Jim Jennings mentioned it to me one time that he said, uh, it's easier to jump. It's easier to jump the ball on a thicker slate. So he said, you know, when you're on like a valley yeah. or a dynamo, you know, he yeah. says, you know, he doesn't jump the ball as well because the right. slate's thinner. No. What do you think and about And some that? of that is it's you're simply, it's a slate that lays in the cavity, less less uh, mass. Right. You know. um, it just lays in there. And and there's a little, little uh, you know, in the bar table you get what's called cabinet sag. Mm -hmm. If you're familiar with valleys and dynamos. And right. The, this you can fine tune. This table you can really tweak it. Mm -hmm. A valley or dynamo, you're mm -hmm. a little bit at the mercy of the table because you just level it at the four feet. Yeah. You know, and it's just like a table a slab of slate that lays in the cavity. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of do that here, but it does have all the leveling wedges that have typically been set from the factory when they bring the table. I got and you. then from then on, the rest of the table's life, you can just level it at the four feet, and it should mm -hmm. be pretty good. I got you. But you get cabinet sag on the uh, the valleys or dynamos, and which is why they're you know cheaper than these because they they don't have as much you know, as many points of level. Okay. Now look at this safety. A little bit of a running ball, just a little bit, then hit. Oh, he didn't want to hit the three, but he's good still. Let's that may be better. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think he has the get the window here. What do you think? I can never Now look, tell. He, he's got a chance at kicking before the three on this side rail here on uh -huh. the bottom. Near that little bead there, maybe right. a hair above it. Mm -hmm. And the, with a touch of high left, go to the bottom rail and then cut the one in and run towards the six. Or cut at the one. Maybe he makes a six. Right. But he runs down here towards the two seven and perhaps gets a shot if he right. makes it. Now, you know, um, that shot that Roland had. Uh, you see that? Now yeah. he's pointing it out for us. Right. Now that shot that Roland had on the one ball, that was uh, where Jaybird pushed out to. Now, do you think Jaybird was pushing out to play a similar safety? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it was just too predictable. You right. get, you pushed out to a shot that you know a good player's going to take. Right. Is he looking like he can see right through this 10-8? Maybe he can only see to the point of the rail where he was indicating. Now he's looking back at the two rail kick. Right. So he's looking to kick to the bottom rail and then cut at the one. So yep. he's, got, he's got like three chances to make something here. The one, yeah. the six, or the uh -huh. two. Not not deep enough. Mm. Now this is uh, not simple by any means. Garcia yeah. is trying to figure out where he needs to be. And see right there, uh, that's really not good enough. He needs to go a little more and then he risks going all the way to the head string and he's mm -hmm. going too far. This is the kind of thing that watching Efren over the years, man, it's, it's just a thing of beauty. You know, Efren sometimes will play this ball. He'll cut the ball, the one end, from say somewhere near Say so put this cue ball on the spot, or mm -hmm. maybe in, in the middle of the rack. Cut the one in and actually go in between the six and the seven and hit the seven on the correct side and then to, go to, to the fall in on the two. Yeah. To stop your cue ball. Yeah, and Efren does stuff like that. You know, I've watched him do it over and over over the years. Now, do you think he goes at the six here, or because uh, well, it looks like he's doing? No, no, he's going to go forward, drive, see that, and what, spin right up into there. Here's the problem: if you overhit it, you overhit you it. Have there's a tough no cut. shot. But he's not bad. But he is tree topped over yeah. the eight. 
but he's fine. Look at this. Cut it in, go straight across the table to the opposite third dot, the, the bead under number three, mm -hmm. and then straight back to where the two is now. He hit it real hard. Now, he might be hooked behind the nine even if he made that two. No, he's yeah. okay. But he, you know, he hit it a little harder than I thought he should have. Yeah. Now, can Bird get to this ball past the four? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he can, he can rail first this. Yeah. And get back up table. He didn't need to. He didn't need far. to. Now, this is a case of playing with the pocket size. He doesn't have to cut the three in the center of the pocket. He can shoot straight at it and stop it. Play it off that left face. Yeah. Can even draw it, yeah. Okay. Saving grace here is that six hanging in the side. That's great. So just get away from the rail about a foot, foot and a half. Um, that's fine. So Sean Apple asks, so the winner of this match has to try and double dip BJ. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, with BJ's break, that is a tall task. Yeah. <laughs> um, tall task. You know, there was a time years ago, many years ago, uh, back, you know, well, we lived like the Flintstones, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we, our cars were powered by our feet. Mm -hmm. You know, we rode dinosaurs to work and stuff. Back when I played a lot of pool, and I liked my chances playing so many people mm -hmm. on the bar table, if it was just the play on the table. You start adding the break in, that's when I started to get worried. Yeah. Because there were guys that could break better than me. And, uh, you know, I could really get out, you know, I, I used to beat the, beat the ghost on the bar table, like the, you know, 13 ball ghost, stuff like right. that, playing bar table, you know. And it was a challenge that people would, uh, and you just always get the money, you know. Yeah. And it sounds really tough, but on the par table, the way they play billiards, caroms, comments, you know, mm -hmm. you could just do it. You could just outrun it. Right. Well, so as far as the play on the table, I like my chances of playing a lot of people. But um, factoring in that break factoring now. in that break, there are some of these guys that just crush that ball, and they could really hit the one ball so squarely. Right. And uh, I. I I didn't tend to play as much as a lot of the other guys. I was off doing my things, my hobbies and all. Right. And so that's the first thing to go, my accuracy of hit and right. long, tough shot making, and especially on like a nine footer. But uh -huh. Now he had a good break there, but I mean, he just, he couldn't draw it. He definitely took some off of that, you know. Yeah, they play a lot of bar table pool in the Midwest. Um, South Carolina, traditionally from the center of the state around Columbia, mm -hmm. all the way to the coast, you know, Charleston, Myrtle Beach. It was, so Charleston had some had some uh, big table, and Myrtle Beach had a little bit. For the most part, the masses of people, uh, you know, the masses of people, you know, they just played bar table. It's just what pool was around here. So many little country little bars and holding the wall. He pushed mm -hmm. out for a jump yeah. there, yeah. obviously. and. Uh, I don't know if Jay might take this. Yeah, I think Jay takes it. If he feels shot. he can lay it down, you know. Right. Some people jump too hard and heavy, and they mm -hmm. cut the one, and they go off the table. Yeah. If he feels he can have the cue ball coming down just on the other side of three, he might take this. Mm -hmm. So it takes letting up on the hit a little bit. If there's any doubt of me getting it to lay down quick, you know, or have the ball, I'm giving it back. <laughs> I see my friend Matt Malden is here. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's great. Yeah. I like Matt. He's a yeah. funny dude. Good friend of mine as well. Yeah. Matt, yeah. Matt's pretty cool. Um, yeah, even before I met Matt, there was there were oh, years ago when I was really living that life and traveling. The 13-ball ghost, oh, that was my go-to, man. Just yeah. guys on the bar table. Yeah. And a lot of times they'd let you play like the 11-ball ghost, and that was just free money. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, 12-ball. Mm. But 13-ball ghost... Pretty fun. But yeah, traveling with Alex Pagulain, I saw something different watching him play 15 ball rotation on the nine footer and just getting out from everywhere. I mean, it's a thing of beauty. A couple of years ago, I watched him play, uh, I believe it was the 11 ball ghost on the big table up in Spartanburg, I think yeah. it was. Uh, and, but he had a, he had like a little bit of a, I guess you'd call it like a spot where after the break he got to move uh one ball so you know if there was like a cluster or you know something like that or if there was a ball that didn't lead to the other ball with easy shape then he would take that ball and move it 
Or he would. He would. Right. He, he, he got to move one ball. Yeah, he got to yeah. move one ball. Just pick a ball. Oh yeah, pick a that's, ball. that's free money too. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you travel. Um, you know, someone's here mentioning that there are a lot of guys that could that could maybe beat the thirteen ball ghost on the bar table half the time. Right. Well, maybe, maybe. But uh, uh, you know, not everybody out there thinks that. You know, so when you were when back in the days when a lot of people were mixing it up mm -hmm. money matches and a lot of people would take that. They thought, you know, a lot of people. There are lots of people who don't think that there's really any realistic shot of that. So right. they they'll let you do that. But yeah, there's so many talented players out there on the bar table and uh, and players of all you know even regulation table players that come to the bar table they find it pretty easy after a while and start to realize subtle differences yeah you know uh, <laughs> the guy in the chat says uh, six four too easy yeah I mean it looks easy it looks easy like you know you kind of want to give it to him but I mean you see it all the time funny yeah. things happen you know, it's, it's not a gimme, guys. I mean, there's pressure involved. Uh, there's a lot There's a lot of uh, small things that are happening uh, intensity-wise in these matches that, you know, it seems to have an effect on, you know, whether or not these guys run these so-called routine outs, you know? Because, yeah, if they're practicing, yeah, like Scott said, 90% they're out. <laughs> Yeah, you know, maybe it is too easy, but, uh, you know, that's what we're doing. That's what tournament we're having. It's on the diamond bar tables, and, you know, we have great players doing it. But it still came down to some top guys, you know. Yeah, the cream always just rises to... <laughs> Looks like we've got some, uh, some side action going on down, down on the other end of the room with... Uh, with uh, Mike Newsom and uh, Stephen Wyatt, the guy um, who runs a stream here. A lot of excitement down there. <laughs> right, we'll okay, break breaking the free here. outside of the box to prevent the 8 and the 9 from going straight in the side, which uh -oh. it got kicked right there, and so did the cue ball. Uh, watch out. Look, if he can see this one here, uh, I yeah. think uh, this could be over. Wow, well, that's that's crazy. Uh, you know, it looks like he's got a, he's got the window to shoot this ball. And if he's getting down this quick, he definitely does. Yeah. Look, I mean, if this ball tracks naturally, the five shouldn't be in play. Oh, he had a touch of corrective English there, just a, sh a hint mm -hmm. of left. That's great. All right. So the is well, the three's the one that's by the side, right? By yeah. the left side. So. He's cutting the three in the left side after the two. So if he doesn't fall right up in perfect, you know, correct side of the three. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that was a different record. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. looked at something else there. Oh, yeah. He's going to be cutting the three and then going to the bottom end of the table, which means he's got to come back down here for the four. So let's see if he goes ahead and tries to fall perfect. And he did. He went ahead and went at the five and passed it. So now he's on the right side. Now he can, now he can play the four in the side. Yeah, now it's over. He's perfect now. I oh guess no, I, I think nudged he, the eight. I, yeah, I think he has to use the eight to hold it. Well, yeah, that's perfect. Well, no, he's drawing this ball, it looks like. Okay, yeah, well, just, just, to, just to help him get yeah. full on the eight. Yeah. Yeah, now uh, I believe we're going to see a BJ Ustery, Roland Garcia, Garcia rematch. Now, do you like... Do you like that shot selection there of uh, spinning up like that, or do you, would you have rather he, shoot he the five in the in the corner? There's nothing wrong with what he did. He just right. went a little far. Yeah. You know, no big deal. Everyday routine stuff. Mm, let's not give it to him just yet, but yeah, he's he's poised to take this match. <laughs> put it that way. Guys, <laughs> it's funny. Like I hate talking, saying this, but you know, I'm not being uh, biased when I say that because I mean I do have this gun in Calcutta. <laughs> oh yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> Goodbye. I 
I didn't buy anybody in the auction. I was back there playing Efren, and I wasn't paying attention. I kept walking away from the table. And there we have it. Roland Garcia defeats Jay Brown. Jason J. Bird Brown. 7-4. to four. Okay, right. well, it's, it's set. It's a rematch. a rematch. Yeah, but I didn't buy anybody in the auction. I was back there fooling around with Efren, you know, and playing one pocket and having a blast, but then I missed some opportunities to get some players. <laughs> but yeah. that's all right. I always usually try to get in on somebody, but right. I didn't. Okay, I've enjoyed it. See you in the finals. Yeah.